Hello and welcome to the Argos Report Viewer Training. My name is Nestor and I will be leading the training today. The intended audience for this training is the Argos Report Viewer and users that are new to Argos. The goal of this training is to demonstrate the basic functionality of Argos and the Argos Web Viewer. We will also take a look at how to execute and distribute reports in each. We will be covering the following objectives in this training. An overview of what Argos is, what it does, and how it works. The resources available in Argos. And the features available as a report viewer. First, we are going to review what Argos is and what it does. Argos is a web-enabled application used to create custom reports against the database. Argos users connect to the MAP server via a secure web interface. The MAP server handles the connection and security to your database and is where we launch all of the eVisions applications including Argos, FormFusion, and IntelliCheck. Argos can connect to various ERP and SQL-based databases including Banner, Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, and Excel, just to name a few. If you have a department database that you would like to create custom ad hoc reports from, please talk to your Argos administrator to see if Argos can connect to it. To create our reports, there are three things that we typically use. A data block form, the report query, and a report format. First, we have the data block form. This is where we will narrow our results. Second is the report query. The report query is a SQL query and is how the requirements are sent to the database. The query incorporates three things, our search parameters, our criteria, and the list of data elements that we want returned. In Argos, we take the data block form and the report query and we combine them into one object that we call a data block. Third, we have the report format. The report format contains the instructions used to create the report. Reports are created as children of the data block. This means that we can use the data block form and query to create multiple reports. The report under a data block are just different ways of formatting the data that we get back from the database. Looking at our example, we can see there are five different reports under this data block. Please do not confuse a report query with an object query. Object queries are the queries used to populate the objects placed on the dashboard, while the report query is the main driving query used to generate your report output. Object queries and report queries may or may not be identical. In the query process, we enter in our search parameters. The data block will then incorporate that criteria into a query. The query is sent to the data source for processing. The requested records are passed back through Argos to the data block. The data block will then process the information and build the report with the format that was selected. A data block can produce different types of reports and reports formatted differently for each type. If we have a data block that returns the fields, name, address, grade, and registration status, we can create various reports because we are not required to use all the returned fields. From the returned fields, we can choose which ones to display on the report. For example, if we wanted a class grade roster report that contains the fields name, grade, and registration status, the address field would not be used and would then be discarded. If we wanted a report for mailing labels, the report could be created within the same data block. The data block will return all the same fields, but we would only use the fields we wish to display. This report may just contain the fields name and address. Since we do not need the remaining fields, they will be discarded.
As a report viewer, you are not required to know this information. This is simply a brief overview of the, of the concepts of querying. Now here are a few points to remember as you navigate through Argos. The data in each report comes directly from the data source. Information is never stored in Argos. Not all of the fields returned by the data block have to be used in every report. The information coming from the data block is dependent on the query created by the data block designer. If the data in the report is not what is expected, there could be an issue with the query that retrieves the data or an issue with the data in the data source. Understanding this concept will make communication with the data block designer easier and will help in troubleshooting these errors. Next, we are going to discuss the four different roles within Argos. Each role has different actions that it can perform, and each role can do the actions of the previous role, as well as additional actions specific to that role. The first role is the Report Viewer. Report Viewers can view and execute reports. The next role is the Report Writer. The Report Writers, in addition to the Report Viewer actions, can create and design reports. The next role is the Data Block Designer. In addition to all the actions of the previous roles, the Data Block Designer can create data blocks and schedule reports. The last role is the Argos Administrator. In addition to being able to perform the actions of all the other roles, the Argos Administrator can administer security, users, and the API module. Now that we've gone over what Argos is and how it works, we'll take a look at the application and discuss the available resources and capabilities you have as a report viewer. Notice that I have a web browser open on my screen. This is the URL I use to access all of the eVisions applications. Your Maps Administrator will provide the URL you use at your institution. This URL can be saved as a favorite and treated like any other website. Notice that we have the option to log into Argos or the Argos Web Viewer. If you don't see the Argos Web Viewer button, please contact your Maps Administrator first. We will select the product we want to use, in this case Argos. This brings up the Argos Start page. This is the Argos main page. Will all, all of our Argos tasks will start. At the top of the screen we have a menu bar. Below that we have our main toolbar. And below the toolbar we have a window that is split into two panes. The left pane has two tabs, Explorer and Shortcuts. Explorer has our folder structure and Shortcuts is where shortcuts are stored. The right pane has the available actions the detailed view of information for the object that we have selected, and a search bar. The search feature allows you to search for data blocks, reports, folders, and schedules. At the bottom right corner of the screen, we can see some login information. We have the server that we are connected to, our login name, and the role that we are assigned. At the top of the screen, we have a menu bar and it contains all of the standard menu items. The tools menu is where we can change our password. Be sure to contact your Argos administrator for your organization's password policy before making a change. Also notice that many of the buttons here are grayed out. The reason for this is that as a report viewer, we do not have permission to them. The buttons that we do have access to are the online support site, the in-product documentation, and the sign in sign out button. Next we will discuss the resources that are available to you. The first resource is the in-product documentation. We have two ways of accessing the in-product documentation. The first is the Argos help icon. This will take you to a general help page describing Argos. And the second option for accessing the in-product documentation is the F1 key on your keyboard. Here in the in-product documentation, it is context sensitive, so the initial help page brought up will depend on where we are within Argos. In this case, if we click F1, 
we get information on the Explorer because that's what we selected. The next button on the toolbar is Support. This button will take us to the online support site. The support page has links to the different areas of support, including the co-op, product support, community, and the help desk. Next, we will be discussing the features that are available as a report viewer. First, we have the folder structure and the detail view. In Explorer, we have folders. Folders organize and maintain security on data blocks. The arrows can be used to expand and contract the folder. Once you have expanded a folder, you can see the folders and data blocks it contains. We talked about data blocks earlier. A data block object is represented by the stack of blue block icons. When you highlight a data block, you can see available actions in the window on the right, as well as related information such as the title description, author, creation date, and modified date. To view this detailed information, click on the lowercase letter i in the top right corner, next to the name of the data block. If I expand the data block by clicking on the arrow, I can see the reports under that data block. If you want to get the detailed information about a report, you can highlight the report and click on the lowercase letter i next to the name of the report. I can see the name of the report, a description, who the author is, and the date that it was created and modified. Here I have five different reports representing the five different report formats that can be created in Argos. Each format has its own icon to represent it. The first report format is the dashboard. It is represented by the icon that looks like a magnifying glass. Dashboards are designed to be on-screen reports. Next is an extract report. Its icon is a page with the letters fix. An extract report is designed to meet predefined output specifications. The next report format is a CSV or a comma delimited report. This report is identified by the letter CSV. This report format exports the data out to a flat text file. The next report is a banded report. Its icon is a dash, representing a band. A banded report is a fully formatted report that is designed to be printed. This report is used for major publications, presentations, reports, and PDF files. The last report is a crosstab report. Crosstab report provides an easy way to relate two or more data attributes in a simple table format. We'll take a look at each of these reports a little bit later. For more information on all of these reports, please refer to the in-product documentation. Next, we will be discussing the shortcuts section. Navigating through the Explorer tree can be time consuming. With a shortcut, we can access the report or data block more quickly. We have two types of shortcuts. My shortcuts are shortcuts that you make for your exclusive use, and shared shortcuts are shortcuts that everyone sees. Report viewers and writers can only create a My Shortcut. To create a shortcut, Highlight a report and click on the shortcut button in the detail window. A dialog box pops up with our options. We can create a My Shortcut and select to open it in a new window or have it slide into the current window. Now when I go to the shortcuts tab, I'll have a shortcut to that report. We have five buttons for the new shortcut. We can execute. This will run the target. Rename will allow us to rename the shortcut. And locate will take us to the target point in the Explorer tree. Delete will delete the shortcut. And edit will allow us to edit the shortcut. Next, we will be discussing the search feature. The search feature allows you to search for data blocks, reports, folders, and schedules to meet various criteria. To perform a simple text search, enter the desired text in the search field and click Search, or press the Enter key on your keyboard. The results will appear in the pane below.
To sort the results, you can click on any of the headers at the top of the list. Right-clicking on an object, then selecting the Locate option, takes you to the object in the Explorer tree. Double-clicking on the object will do the same. You can run the data block or report or perform any other actions that you have permissions for. If you want to perform a more in-depth search, you can expand the advanced filter section by clicking on the white arrow next to the search button. Advanced filters allow you to choose to include folders, data blocks, reports, and schedules in the results. Administrators can also choose to include objects in the trash bin. Other available filters include the date created, date last modified, last run date, author, and the associated connection. You can also choose to include all or none of the filters by checking the all or none boxes. Now I'm going to perform an advanced search for our data block. I'll remove all the filters except data blocks and enter the date range that I know it was created on. After you have added your filters and clicked the update results box, you will get your results. You also have the option to clear your filters. As you see, we have our results in the lower panel. I know my data block was created on May 19, 2016, so I'll sort by date and choose my data block by right clicking and choosing locate. You can also double click on it to locate. We are going to run through examples of each of these reports. Our first report is a dashboard. First, we need to run the dashboard. After executing the report, we see the data block form that is the basis of all the reports created under this data block. Each report will use the same data block form, but the information will be processed differently. The dashboard will provide us with the status of a report from the data block. We have control boxes used to enter in our search criteria. We also have a box returning the results for our query. The first control is the date field. We can tell that it is a date field because it has a calendar page icon. If we click on the calendar icon, a calendar pops up. In the calendar, the double arrows scroll by year, while the single arrows scroll by month. We can also type in the date manually. The next control is a drop down box. The drop down box has a drop down arrow and we can choose one item from the list. The next control is a list box and it has a scroll bar on the side. In most cases, this control allows you to make multiple selections from the available list. To make multiple selections, you can use the control key or the shift key. Holding the control key will allow us to select multiple non-adjacent items. Holding the shift key allows us to select multiple items within a range. To select all, we can use control A, or you can click and drag to the bottom of the list. The next control is an edit box. The edit box allows the user to search by all or part of a text field. In this case, we are using it to narrow down our search results by the last name, or part of a last name. This field may or may not be case sensitive. It depends on how the report query is written. In this case, I know that it is not case sensitive, so I can use a lowercase w. We also have check boxes that can be used to narrow or expand our search. The memo field is a block that allows you to enter in multiple lines of text. It is larger than the edit box and it has scroll arrows on the side. In a dashboard, the memo field is not as useful because it is not being used to narrow the search results. We will use the memo field later in the training with another type of report. If a dashboard report is often run within the same parameters, rather than inputting the same values each time the report is run, the saved settings option can be used to auto-populate those fields. After entering in our desired values, expand the drop-down of the dashboard options and select Save Current Settings. 
Give your settings a name and description. You may also choose to make this setting public by checking the Share with Others Users box. Now when I launch the dashboard, I have the option of selecting my newly saved settings from the dashboard options. This will populate the control fields within the saved settings that I have saved. We have also a button. Buttons may cause many different actions, but in this case it runs the query that returns the results to the screen. When the required controls have been entered, we can click the button to run the query. Notice that this form displays our results in the multi-column list box. One option we have with the multi-column list box is to export the contents out as a common delimited file. The file can then be read and modified in a spreadsheet program such as Excel. To do this, you can right-click on the multi-column list box and click Save Results. Here we have a Save Results window where we can select the columns to export. You can check and uncheck the boxes to select or deselect the items. The check mark selects all the items in the list, while the X deselects them all. You can move fields up or down the list. Using the arrows, you can rename a selected field, write headers, include the variable name with the field name, and include byte order mark. Including byte order mark is to ensure that characters with special formatting are exported correctly. We will leave the defaults. Click Save, and then the File Save window will allow us to create a file name and specify a location. We get confirmation that the file has been created, and at this point we can treat the data as we would any other spreadsheet file. And here are the results. Now let's move on to the CSV report, which is our flat textile or commonly limited format report. The report option drop down allows us to select all the reports under this data block. We're going to select the CSV report. For this report, we can save to disk, create an email, and save and open. First, we will save. This brings up a save report window where we can name the file and select a save location. Notice that we get a confirmation that the file has been saved. Our second option is to send the report as an attachment in an email. Please note that your Argos administrator must first make the email option available. Clicking the email icon brings up a send an email window where I can configure my email. The default email server is filled in for me. Now I will fill in the remaining fields. The attachment name defaults to attachment.csv. Please note that this is not the same name for the file I created and named using the save option. Each of the options on the screen are independent from each other. Here you are able to choose the file format. I'll go ahead and click send. The report is created and I get a notification telling me that the report has been emailed. My last option is to launch. Again, I first have to name and save the file. But immediately after saving my file, the file is opened with my spreadsheet program. Notice that the data in the CSV file is different from the data returned for the dashboard report. This is because the reports are formatted differently. Next, we are going to run the extract report. Here we select the extract report. For this report, we can also save to disk, create an email, and save and open. The save option and the email option work the same as with the CSV report. So I am going to choose the launch option to demonstrate the extract report. 
This time we will fill in the comments field because it is built into this report. Again, I first have to name and then save the file. And this time, unlike my CSV file, my report opens with a notepad since this is a text file. We have the header information at the top, which gives the company information and run date. We then have the comments that we entered. And below that, we have all the data for the report that is formatted as a fixed width report. The data elements all start at the same place. The ID, last and first name, city, state, and zip code all start at the same position since this is a fixed width report. The fixed width of the field defines the number of characters that will be displayed for each field. So if the field exceeds the allocated amount of space, the field will be truncated. The banded report encompasses the most formatting and is primarily designed for printing. Notice that the icons changed here. This time my options are Preview, Save to Disk, Email, and Print. First we will click Preview. This brings up the report in the preview screen. I can zoom in or out by using these buttons. I can scroll through the pages by clicking on the thumbnail and scrolling. We can also use the arrows at the top for scrolling. A single arrow moves through one page. The double arrow goes to the beginning or to the end. Using this icon, we can go directly to a page. We can search for specific text by clicking on the binoculars. We can also save and print from this preview screen. We can save the file. Here we will name and save the file. The Bandit report can be saved as multiple files types including HTML, PDF, RTF, XLS, while it might seem odd to save as a Bandit report to another format, it is sometimes necessary. If, for example, we need an Excel file, but no CSV report was created, we have the option to save the Bandit report as a CSV file type. We will just save it as a PDF. When we click save, we get a PDF setup window. I will accept the defaults. The PDF setup remembers your last used settings for items such as font embedding and author information among others. The report is created and is opened on my Edge browser. We can email the file. This works in the same way as it did in the other reports. My last option is to print the file. The print selection window will pop up when we click the button. Notice that we are not prompted to save the file prior to printing. Please note that the save option must be selected to save a hard copy of the file. The last report I want to show you is the crosstab report. 
The cross-tab report, also known as a cross-tabulation or matrix report, provides an easy way to relate two or more data attributes in a simple table format. The cross-tab report has the same options as the banded report. You can preview, save to disk, create an email, and print. Now that we've seen how to navigate and run reports in the Argos client, we'll next take a look at how to do the same using the Argos Web Viewer. This feature allows you to view reports from within your favorite web browser. This means you can run Argos reports from a Mac, PC, or tablet. This is the Argos Web Viewer main page. The Web Viewer functions much like the client, but there are some differences when it comes to look and feel. Notice that the screen is split into two panels, similar to that of the client. But unlike the client, we cannot click on a folder to expand it and view its contents. Instead, all of the folders are displayed on the left, and data blocks are displayed on the right. Clicking on the training folder will display all the folders that the parent folder contains. From the left panel, we see that the training folder contains five folders including Administrator, Advanced, Designer, Report Viewer, and Report Writer. From the right panel, we can see that there are no data blocks directly under the training folder. Clicking on the Report Viewer folder, we see that it contains one folder and two data blocks. Notice that as I navigated through the folder, a breadcrumb trail was also built in the path bar. I can use this to navigate back through my path by simply clicking the location that I wish to go back to. Since the report viewer folder is where I actually want to be, I will set that location as my home. To set your home location, simply navigate to your desired location, click on Settings, and then Set Home. Now whenever you log into the Web Viewer, you will be taken directly to your home folder. You can also create shortcuts. Clicking on the Shortcuts tab will show you a list of all the shortcuts. Notice that some of these shortcuts are my shortcuts or private, meaning that only I can see them. These shortcuts have a lock icon associated with them. The shortcuts without the lock are shortcuts that everyone can see. To delete a shortcut, simply click on the X symbol. To create a shortcut, click on the star next to the data block or report you wish to create a shortcut to. The Shortcuts tab will now contain the shortcut that I just created. Next to the Shortcuts tab is the Recent tab. This shows a list of recently visited data blocks and reports. The Web Viewer also has a search feature, similar to that of the client. I can enter a word in the search field and either press the search button or the Enter key on my keyboard. In the web viewer, the results will be filtered by data block and report. To close search results, click on the X on the right side of the search results bar. Now let's take a look at this data block. The dot with the number in it shows the number of reports in this data block. The share icon allows you to share a URL to this data block via email. If I click on details, I get information such as description, when the data block was created, and when it was last modified. I also see a list of reports that this data block can create.
Now let's take a look at how to run one of the reports. After selecting the banded report, I can enter my previous saved settings using the saved dashboard settings. Notice that next to the run icon, there was a report dropdown. Listed are the available reports from this data block. If you would like to run a different report, just select it from the list and click run. And here is our report. We have come to the end of the training. If you are a report writer, data block designer, or administrator, you can find additional videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you for attending.